Hi everyone and welcome along to the Racing TV Q&A session, a special Q&A session with Harry Cobden who's uh, kindly on hand to answer all your questions that have come in through the various social media channels. Harry, are you first up, are you alright? Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh, missing the racing, but uh, we're in good health. Good man. This might be a little way of having a bit of a distraction. Are you, how are you feeling about it? Have you had a sneak peek at any of the questions? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been for uh, a few of them and uh, some of them are uh, a bit silly, but there's some good ones in there as well. <laughs> All right. Look, we'll get stuck in um, straight away. And the first question has come from Joshua Myers. He said, for someone that wants to be a jockey, what is your advice, Harry? Um, go to the racing school if you don't have any uh, like racing or horse experience. Um, learn from there, they're very good, the instructors are fantastic there, they've got jockey coaches and exercises and all things to learn on and um, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd start with that and uh, from, um, from there onwards I'd um, get, into, get into a yard and work my way up. Good man, right, next one, Joseph Chambers has said, at what age did you decide to become a jump jockey and what was it actually uh, made you? made you think that, that you want to do it and that's what you wanted to pursue? I suppose uh, I, I was lucky enough that I got into, um, got into pony racing when I was nine and, and, and then I, uh, I suppose I got hooked on it and um, from about 11 or 12 onwards it was always, uh, it was always an ambition of mine. There you are now, look, all these years on. Uh, this one's from Instagram, Jules Lessarg, I apologise I haven't done that right. Um, will the physical work on the farm be enough to keep your weight down through this layoff? Hopefully. Um, I'm working quite hard, you know, getting up early in the morning, doing, doing a lot of farm work, and um, I've, got a, I've got a few chicks to rear as well. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm keeping fairly fit. I've got six dogs that I walk all the time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep fit anyway. Good man. Well, we, you did that video. Um, you kindly teed it up and asked the viewers to engage. Um, with the cows in the background and Aaron Stone has naturally said which one's your favourite cow have you got one? I don't have a favourite one no I've got I suppose if I had to pick one uh, uh, there's, there's one that wasn't actually uh, in that barn but uh, there is uh, there is one that I bought probably 15 years ago that's, that's, that's still around so uh, yeah that was the first one I ever bought. What's the name? Uh, I called her Pretty. <laughs> It's all right. Um, should we get back to racing? Jonathan Packer said, you're visited by a magical wizard who gives you a choice between these two options, champion jockey or winning the Gold Cup. I'd probably take the Gold Cup. Yeah? Why is that? Yeah. Not the champion? I don't know. I'd like to be a champion jockey, obviously, but um, I suppose the Gold Cup is a race that I've always wanted to win and uh, it would be, it'd be high on, definitely high on my agenda. They might both come in time. Um, Paul Prescott, he said, if you had a choice to ride one horse from any other stable, what would you ride? Um, what horse would I ride? I'd love to, I'd, I'd quite like to ride Epiton on a champion hurdle. Um, she looks very good, doesn't she? I wouldn't mind to go on her. No, I think that's a, that's a fair shout. Now, I don't know how, how you're going to answer this one because um, it's come from up on high. This is Paul Nichols' OBE. Uh, he says to Harry Cobden, McFabulous World Hurdle or Novice Chasing, in your opinion? It's come from I don't know. He's, he's placed many more horses than I have. Um, I'm not, I don't have a clue. I've only ever ridden them. But um, it's a tough one. You know, he, he's, he's uh, obviously improving. And um, I don't suppose a, a year hurdling wouldn't, 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 another year hurdling wouldn't hurt him. Um, but at the same time, on the other hand, if you're going to jump fences, why not crack on and do it? But um, I don't know. It's a tough one, you know. If the, if the, um, I, I, I don't really know. I'll leave that one to him. He's uh, he's a better judge than I am. But I know, you know, a, a diplomatic he, he, answer. Yeah, you could go either way, couldn't you? Um, I mean, I think he's um, I think he's the best novice we've got, and uh, looking looking forward, he will be a fantastic chaser in years to come but at the same time you know he could be he could be good enough and he might improve and he could be a world of hurdle horse as well problem for another day um this relates to the governor as well to paul nichols and this is coming from fiona milton who said if you could give paul nichols one piece of advice what would it be oh 
put a few more stables up. <laughs> we need a few more horses. <laughs> Um, this one's from Instagram, uh, BM1990. First of all, big fan of the way you ride. Aside from re remarkable training ability, Paul Nichols has been a fantastic part of nurturing young talent. Does he also take interest and advice off the race course as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, he, he, he doesn't just watch races at home. He watches replays when he gets back. He's watching it on the way, on the way home in the car. Um, and he, and he, he wouldn't miss too much. And, uh, he he obviously take the jockey's point into consideration, but he um he he makes his own mind up at the same time, and um you know look at his record he he he's uh, he's he's no fluke, and he uh, he he try not to leave any stone unturned. Yeah, the figures are actually staggering. The statistics that he's clocked up over the years. Um, Samuel Hart, if you were to have a dinner party with five jockeys, past or present. Who would you be inviting round? You can have flat or jumps. Five from the past or the present. Who would they be? Um, I, I'd, I'd probably go five from the past. I would quite like John Frankham to be there. One. Um, probably Carl Llewellyn, maybe Brendan Powell. Um, I don't know. I quite like I quite like those uh, those sort of uh, older generation that I don't really know very well I quite like to to sit around with them but um yeah John Frank and Carla Wellen Brendan Powell uh who else would you know? uh two more two more um don't know. I don't know I don't know who else I'd probably I don't know anyone from the present um Tom Skew is pretty pretty good at telling a story uh, um who else would be fairly decent uh Quite like Harry Bannister. I like, I like, I like him. I, I, I quite like spend a bit of time with him. He makes me laugh a fair bit. Good man, you've done it. That's the five. Um, moving on, Lindsay Methven has said, "Do you prefer riding and working with horses that are more complex and need time and insight, or the straightforward types?" Um, probably the straightforward types because it makes your job as a jockey a lot easier. Um, you know, there's nothing nicer than sitting on one and uh, lobbing away to the first, and it's not pulling, it's jumping while it's listening, and uh, you know those those easy horses to ride um, probably makes you look better as well. Uh, next one, and uh, Jay Atkinson said, "Who is the comedian in the weighing room?" Um, I suppose Matt, Matt, Matty Batts when he's about, but uh, you know. Down, down in the sort of West Country at the Wincantons and and places like that. Tom Skew normally cracks a joke most days. Good man, right? This one, I'm going. I'm intrigued by what you're going to say here, Rob Kerr. I'll ask this in a couple of parts. He said, "Harry, you're marooned on a desert island. What three luxury items would you want most of all?" That's the first part. Ooh. Um. Three luxury items, what I like. Boat to get you off it. That would help for a start. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what would I like? What what three items would I like? I would probably like a um, barbecue. Nice. A fridge and a freezer. A fridge oh. and a freezer. A fridge for the drinks and a freezer for the, for the steaks. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good, uh, good desert island. And he does say as well, this is also from Rob, he said, which female companion would you most like to be washed up with you? As in, as in, a, as in, a, as in a jockey female companion? No, or as in... It doesn't specify at all. Oh, um, quite like uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah. She, she, she'd do. I could probably spend a few weeks with her. <laughs> no, okay. We've got a desert island with a fridge, a freezer, a barbecue with Margot Robbie. That's, that's how Harry Cobb likes to be marooned. Um, let's get back to the racing. And Scott said, uh, surname Clanders Oboe, top of the game, all lining up in the King George. Who are we on? Oh, tough one. Um, I prob you probably ride... Oh, I don't know. That is a tough one. Um, 
you know, surname at his best is very, very good. Clan is over. He's obviously brilliant around Kempton and top of the game is probably the horse we've got for a Gold Cup next year. So that would give me a headache. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if, it depends what top of the game came out and did first time out next season. If he went and bolted that first time out, then I'd probably want to... Um, Probably, you know, if he, was, if he started in like a, I don't know, let's just say Paul ran him in a Betfair chase first time out or something like that, yeah. uh, and, he went and, and, and he went and won, then you'd obviously try and go for the bonus, wouldn't you? But um, you might go to the Labrook, and if he wins the Labrook, then you'd be, you'd be brave enough to get off him in a King George if you were definitely going to ride him in a Gold Cup. Well, that actually leads you on pretty much. Hard. Gary St. John said, how is top of the game? Obviously, we, we didn't get to see him last season as it was now. Um, and will he, be, uh, will he win the 2021 Gold Cup? He's already beaten Santini and Delta Work before. I hope so. Um, he's, uh, Paul actually brought him back into a little bit of, bit of work at the back end of this season, had him trotting up the hill and a, and a few other things just to get the old bones going. But, um, you know, he's still got plenty of time on, on his side and he's only a young horse and he's big. And I suppose um, hopefully he's still improving, but obviously the form has worked out well from his, from his novice season. So, um, yeah, like I was gutted he couldn't, couldn't, couldn't be around this year. And, uh, but, um, you know, looking, looking forward, uh, he's, uh, he's going to be an exciting one to have back in the camp. Yeah, one to look forward to for sure. A couple of, uh, couple of the others to look forward to. Joe Smith has asked, uh, how much potential do Danny Wisbang and Master Tommy Tucker have? Uh, obviously, Master Tommy Tucker's got bags and bags of ability. It's just I've only managed to keep him on his feet once this season. He ran four times and fallen three, which has been a been a bit of a headache. But um, you know, he's probably one of the best horses in the yard when we can keep him keep him on his feet and when he's right. Um, yeah. Danny Wisbang, uh, you know, I didn't think we saw the best of him last season, um, and I think. Going forward, uh, he'll improve improve again for us somewhere on his back. He's still quite a quite a big raw horse, and um, I'm not saying he's going to be a champion, but he's going to be sort of one of those horses that's probably going to get to 155 or something like that, and uh, and, and be a real nice one for next year. Okay, uh, this is from Paul, and I quite like this one. If you weren't a jockey but were actually a horse, you've got to imagine this, obviously. Which horse would you be personality wise? So, which of the headline horses that we know perhaps or that you know particularly well, which sort of horse would refl reflect your personality best? Oh, which horse would reflect my personality the best? Probably, um, I don't know. I suppose I've got to put it to a horse that's quite like me. I mean, relatively laid back. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not too worried about things, but genuinely, genuinely gets the job done. Um, so it's not really any of the any of the good ones that we've got in the yard. It definitely wouldn't be surname because he's pretty, uh, pretty fiery. Polyphilog gets a bit wound up and yeah. tries exceptionally hard. Um, what have we got that's fairly laid back? Uh, potentially Kel Destin. Okay, all right, we'll go with that. Keldestan, if you were a horse, Keldestan, right. Um, Sussex Mud, uh, Mudguard has written, who is the best unraced horse at Ditchit who you're most looking forward to riding next season? Oh, tough one. Um, who is the best unraced horse at Ditchit? To be honest, I wouldn't have sat on loads of them, but um, what have I heard? I must have heard someone say something good about a horse in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I must have heard someone say something. Um, oh, oh. Um, there's a horse. I can't remember its name, but I think it's by Motivator. Um, that that a few of the a few of the lads quite like. Um, that will be running in a bumper next season. Um, I'm not even sure if it has got a name yet, but um, I think it's my motivator. It's it's quite a quite a nice animal. All right, last one, and without giving all the trade secrets away, uh, Owen Lachlan has said three for the notebook. Have you got three that he could, he could have going forward for next season? Three horses for the notebook. Uh, I think Pick Dory will be a good novice chaser next season. 
uh, it'd be good to have top of the game back to his best. Um, and so I think he'd be the be our, I suppose, Gold Cup contender. And oh, mm, and I think and I think getaway could uh, bounce. On. I think. If we didn't, I wouldn't say we underachieved with him, but he um, he's one that we could we could see win some nice races next year. Still a novice over fences. He's had his win done, and I think uh, he could progress to be a uh, really nice novice chaser. Well, we just had a little bit of a peril there. Wi-Fi was a bit. One of our Wi-Fis was a little bit distorted. So just to confirm, that was Getaway Trump, yeah, the last one that you mentioned. Getaway Trump, yeah. Good man. Last seen in the in the Christmas hurdle. Is he all right then? Yeah, he um, he actually had his wind done. He couldn't breathe very well. Don't ask me how it came about, but he was running. You know, his first novice chase runs were Bags of were good, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They were. They were good runs. And um, I think we got beat by put the kettle on. Who actually went on to win an article, didn't didn't it? But um, yeah, he obviously. And then he went back over hurdles, ran the Christmas hurdle. It was disappointing. Uh, he had his wind back. Uh, he had his wind done again. Um, the girl at rides him every day. Said she could, uh, she could see the difference. And um, I just think he'll be a horse next season. He never really got his ground. He wants better ground. He, you know, his best performance last year was probably at air and sand down on a sounder surface. So uh, he is, um, he's a spring horse. But I think you know, if we could start again next season fresh, he's had a couple of runs over fences. Um, get him out and try and try and win a few, but I think we'll see the best of him um, probably at the air meeting or maybe could possibly, if he's good enough, go to Punchestown. Hey, right. That's it. That's all the questions done and dusted. A um, couple from me. Which was your favourite? Did you have a favourite question in there? Um, did I have a favourite question there? Yeah. Uh, I'd be, I'd be, in, I'd be intrigued to know what Paul does with what Fabulous. That would probably be the best one. I, I, I'm quite excited to see what he does with him because uh, he's one that uh, we all like quite a lot, and I'd, uh, I'd be interested to see what we do do with him. And lastly, we saw a picture. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago on social media. I think when racing obviously was was on the back burner of you and a, a rather large looking cake. How good was it? What kind of cake was it? Oh, it was a uh, it was a lemon drizzle cake. On I think I was it. I think it was a lemon drizzle cake. Anyway, I don't know. I'm, I made it myself, and it was the first cake I've ever made. So uh, it's not really uh, it's not really my gig the bacon, but uh, I, I gave it a go anyway. Top man, Harry. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Best of luck, and hopefully we'll see you um see you riding horses again sooner rather than later. I know we've got to wait till July, but um, hopefully everyone stays sound and we get racing back as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thanks, Nick.